Good morning. Wow, what a powerful worship. Can we give God glory, please? Can we put our hands and give the best? Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I'm glad you're here this morning. Amen. Amen. Isn't that amazing? We come together. We miss each other, but the centrality of who we worship is Jesus Christ. Amen. We worship him in spirit and in truth. That's amazing. Do you know that we've been praying for the whole of the week? But before I do that, for the first timers, thank you so much for coming. Can we give God glory for the first timers? <laughs> Amen. So if you're sitting beside someone that has a lay, that means they're newcomers. And uh, uh, before the conclusion, uh, just shake their hands and, and uh, we want to welcome them. And, and, and those that invited them, thank you so much for inviting them. God bless you. God bless you. And for those that came back from a long vacation, welcome back. Amen. We missed you. We missed you. Well, today is a very beautiful Sunday. It's, it's God's day for, where all of us come, can come together. You could have been, you, you could have gone somewhere else this morning, right? Amen? You could have gone somewhere else, but instead you're here. In other words, the Spirit of God has led you here because He wants you to know. He wants us to come together and worship God. And I do believe He has a message for us this morning. I do believe that. I do believe God has prepared the ground for His people uh, to receive their portion. How many of you have, have no, you, you can say that it's a great week, but it's been filled with challenges or sort of, you know, not challenges, problems. No, I'm not talking about your husband or wife, but just challenges this week. Can somebody, God bless you. All right. Well, today I do believe God has a word for you. And for the rest of us, I do believe God has, has some stored for you, a miracle, healing, or, or things that would, would, uh, would help us um, enjoy and uh, realize that God cares about each one of us. All right? All right, so without further ado, would you please ret uh, turn your Bible to John chapter 4, and we will be going through uh, the Word this morning, and John chapter 4, I'll be uh, reading uh, King James Version, and that'll be on uh, page, uh, starting with verse 46. Now, for those of you who need the, uh, if you can't read that, just listen, <laughs> otherwise you might need your a mighty fine glass. And so here, John chapter 4, starting in verse 46. And if you have a Bible, uh, read along with us, please. Amen? Are you there? All right. So starting with verse 46, and it says here, So Jesus came un uh, again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a certain no nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went out to him and implored and, uh, to, uh, for Jesus to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. Verse 49 says here, the noble man, uh, man said to him, sir, please come down before my child dies. She said to him, Go your way, your son lives. Let me repeat that again. It says, Go your way, your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he went his way. Verse 51. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Your son lives. The following verse says, Then he inquired of them the hour when he got better. And they said to him, Yesterday about the seventh hour, or 1 p.m., the fever left him. So the father knew it was at that same hour in which Jesus said to him, Your son lives. Verse 54. This again is the second sign Jesus did when he came out, out of Judea into Galilee. Let's bow our heads. Father, again, we thank you this morning. I pray, God, that you will, as you have prepared the ground for us today to seek you, to know you more. Your word is already anointed. I pray, God, that you will open up our eyes and open our ears to hear 
what you have for each one of us. I pray, God, that you will inhabit the praise of your people, that we will grow and know you more as our Savior, our Lord, and our Master. We give you all glory and honor. In Christ's name we pray. Never will say, amen and amen and amen. Well, today we are going to consider Jesus as our great physician or our healer. Our healer. Great healer and physician. Our great Jehovah Rapha is our healer. We're made of mind, soul, and body. In other words, there are certain um, specialists that can only do or analyze different aspects of our personhood. But Jesus is different. He not only can heal us, he can restore our soul, he can heal our broken heart. He's complete. Amen? Can someone say amen? He's a complete healer. And not only because he's just a healer or he's um, a, a, a physician, he's God himself. He's God himself. Remember that. He's God. In this particular journey that we are going to do is that we are going, going to consider this noble man. He doesn't have a name. He doesn't have a name. He says a certain man, a certain noble man. This person is not just an ordinary person. He could be a cousin of the ruling uh, patriarch, which is Herod at that time. He could be, he has influence. He has uh, finances. He has control, and sometimes perhaps he has control over somebody's life or death. He's a person of influence, knowledge, money, and all the other aspects of a person that you can consider as a person of worth. But it's so interesting to note that all of those things that he has, all the things that he can say, these are mine, my pedigree, my relationship, the, my position, my, my influence. There's one situation that all of those things can solve because his son is sick. So this person who has so much power in his disposal, he comes to a point where the money that he has, the influence that he has, he has done everything that he can, and he sees his son lying at the point of death. A desperation has come. Now, for those of you who have children, amen, if you have a child or if you have children, you know how this person feels. They say that you might as well talk bad about the mom, but don't talk about the child. Amen? Don't mess with my child. You can mess with me, but don't mess with my child because the lion will rise up and chop you up. The child is very important because that's the heritage. And yet as a father, he sees his son. Amen? Lying in bed, all the doctors and all the influence still there. Sometimes in our lifetime, God has to put us in a situation of desperation. Desperation or crises will bring the best of us. You would note later on that Jesus Christ knew the thought of the man and all those that are there. You see, sometimes we can be so religious that we can think of Jesus Christ as the great Santa Claus. In other words, Lord, I need you now. I need you to answer my prayer. I need you for my job. I need you for promotion. I need you for all the things that you can give to me. And that is the human nature. We see anything or anyone that we don't understand for our benefit. And that sometimes that's nothing wrong with that. Because God wants us to 
to be satisfied. But you would notice that he, Jesus Christ, on the following, he rebuked not only him, because the translation says, and he told him, right? Did you see that? And he says, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. I saw that. I said, man, this person is desperate to come to Jesus, and Jesus Christ rebuked him. What kind of God? What, I was thinking, what kind of a healer would rebuke a person that is desperate for, for his son to be healed? And he says, unless you see signs, you will not believe. I did a little research, and it, you know what it says? Because there were people, if you read the previous verses, the people came there because they saw his miracles. He saw the blessings that they will, if they tag along and follow Jesus Christ, they'll be fed. He just turned water into wine. They can have all of this. All they need to do is follow Jesus. And Jesus Christ used that person to illustrate. He says, unless, he says, you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. In other words, he was trying to get their attention. Because Jesus Christ can supply all your needs, he can supply all your wants. But those are the products of who he is. He was trying to translate the people from what they want into who is the source? There are many people just like that. Perhaps you know them. In my ministry, I've seen many people come before the Lord saying, Pastor, can you pray? Can you do this? Can you? And they will promise, make promises. If you do this, I will serve you the rest of my life. If you do this, if God does this, I will give my tithes. And if you give, the, if you, all the promises, and, and I would be smiling because in the, in, the, in the beginning, I was so excited. But then several weeks later on, you would notice they're gone. <laughs> Where are they? Because they got what they want, and, and they're gone. And so Jesus Christ was simply letting them know, I can provide what you want, but never forget who's the source. Amen. This desperate man came to Jesus. Sometimes desperation will take us, but don't wait for that desperate time to come. Sometimes, because God loves us, that's the reason why Paul says, God says, my grace is sufficient. He was trying to get the thorn in his side to be taken away, but God says, no, my grace is sufficient. In other words, grace of God is not just for us to be blessed, but grace of God is also the power to go through difficulties. Can someone say amen? Because grace itself, it's not just for, it's, it's all about, and that is part of it. But just to survive, to, to go through life without knowing what's happening, but you hang on tightly, that in itself, my friend, is the grace of God. And sometimes for God to see what we are when the rubber meets the road, sometimes we have to go through crisis. We might go to testing, but God can change the testing into what? Testimony. Instead of being a victim, you become a victorious. Does someone say amen? And God was simply turning their mindset from the hands into the face of God. So what happened here? Conversation. And if we look through here, you would notice that he says here that, and it says he came out. Now, let me give you this sort of a um, location type, Capernaum and, and Judea's here. It's about maybe 15 to 20 miles, depending on how, because we, we went there many years ago. And you can tell that it's quite far. It says that the man heard about Jesus, a healer. He doesn't even know him. He heard about a man who can heal. He heard about a man who has a full of love and compassion. The man from 20 miles away heard about 
a man called Jesus, who he doesn't have any relationship whatsoever, and says, you know what? In the point that he was in Capernaum, listen to this. There was nothing. There was no miracle. There was nothing. He was on, 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 on a place of what? Of death. But something forced him to get up. And sometimes, my brother and sister, sometimes where you are, sometimes you have to put your stripy boots and get up from where you are to move. The Bible says that he journeyed, left his household, and went to where Jesus Christ was. And Jesus Christ told him this, unless you see signs and wonders. Now, sometimes people stop when they don't feel that their prayers are answered. Listen to this. Faith believes before the answered prayer. Faith believes before the answered prayer. Let me repeat that again. Some of you, you're not getting that. Faith believes before the answered prayer. In other words, the Word of God says you do not have it because you don't ask. A nobleman came to Jesus and he was rebuked. But instead of that, he says, Lord, can you come? Did you see that, the answer? Sometimes desperation, just like the woman who says, if I can only touch the hem of God, his garment, I will be healed. Desperation sometimes forces us to abandon our safety net and says, God, I don't know what's going to happen, but I will follow Jesus. Amen. We remember the time when God gave us the vision for a bundle life church. And somebody told me this, and I, and I will never forget. It says, when God tells you to do his vision, he does not look at your checkbook. He looks at your faith. When God wants you to do a vision, He doesn't look at your checkbook because your checkbook will shrink your faith. Your faith will shrink your vision of God. There's a difference. Fear will paralyze you. Overanalysis causes paralysis. The nobleman could have analyzed his problem, but he said, no, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to get up where I am, and I will go to where Jesus was. What did Jesus Christ answer? Here it is, and it says here, go your way, on, on verse 50, it says, Jesus said to him, go your way, your son is dead. What did it say? I mean, you're looking at me. Look at your board. <laughs> what does it say? Your son lives. The present. It didn't say your son will live. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things and sin. Now faith is. It is, is, is. Your son lives. Your son lives. Go. One of the things is this. One point that I want to sh make sure with you this morning is this. He believed. And it says, so the man believed, number one, the word that Jesus Christ spoke. Did you see that? He believed. He had a mental exercise. Some of us are good at that. We, we have this mental exercise about the word of God. And we forget the second one. What is that? And he what? What did he say? Look at your word. And it says here, and it says, and he left. Isn't it? And he went his way. Two things. The spoken word, he believed it, but he just did not remain there. You have, and I have to understand who is the source. Who's speaking? He's the one that calms the storm. He's the one that fed the 5,000. He's the one that brings life 
from death. He's the one. Amen. He's the healer. He spoke. Naaman was an officer, and he was told, dip yourself seven times in that river. And he says, there are many rivers that are cleaner than this. Why would I do this here? And he says, if the Lord says, you dip yourself seven times in this river that might be dirty for you, it is too hard for you. And he did. And as soon as he was dipping himself in that river, his leprosy left. My friend, sometimes we are believing what the Word says, but we never, never move into action. Faith is an action word. It's not a passive word. Faith, it says, I will believe even though my eyes don't see it. For faith, we walk by faith and not by what? Not by sight. And he moved. And he what? He went his way. He, it doesn't say that he, wait a second now, Lord, you, you know, uh, I'm a little bit, I don't understand what you're saying. He just believed what Jesus Christ told him. Believe. And so he traveled back. Now, when he was traveling back, how many of you uh, do maybe jogging or uh, walking? You walk? How many of you barely? Nobody walks around, run? I know Pastor Noel runs half marathon, and I can do that in my dream, but my, Pastor Jude and I go to uh, Jigo Fire Station. How many of you know that? And they said, Pastor, why don't you go somewhere else like G- uh, Dead to Sports Complex or Tumon? There's a reason for that. Because at the corner, there's this fire station, and there's what they call the first responders. <laughs> Amen? If you get some problem, all you need to do is run back to the fire department, and they will get all those fire trucks and resuscitate you. So my wife, Pastor Jude, and I would run a walk three miles, sometimes we walk three miles, and it takes about maybe two hours, three miles for two hours. I'm serious. Well, some of you have six hours, but we do it two hours. That's a long. So if you talk about that, right, it's, it's a long walk back. So the, the guy probably would be saying, he would, he would say, wow, what's going on? And he doesn't know. And then halfway, his servant came and says, sir, he's healed. Your son He's healed. He's well. And he says, I want to make sure what time. In other words, from that moment, he was already contemplating of what Jesus Christ said because it will come at the end of the message later. What time did my son got better? And he says, the 7 hour or 1 p.m. Something broke in his heart. Something broke because he never had any, because he's an old man, he tells people, but when he obeyed, he began, something changed in him. But he had been healed. The same are. The small deposit of faith. Listen to this. Even our faith, we cannot, we cannot produce our own faith. It is God's gift. It is a seed of faith that is given to us. We cannot believe. It is only God that will give you grace. It will give you faith. And so the seed that God has planted in you, what, how, no matter how small, listen to this, no matter how small the seed is, it will produce the plant where that seed came from. In other words, that's why it says, if your faith is small as a mustard seed, you know how small that? Have you, do you know how small mustard seed is? It's so small, and yet the content of that plant, or the what they call the the the, uh, the uh, uh, jungle type of mustard seed that they were referring, can go from one small seed into a biggest tree where birds can nestle. So the seed was planted. I do not know. I don't know what you have. Perhaps you have a seed that has been placed in you 
and yet you always believe, and yet you never, never obey. There's a difference. You can allow that seed to germinate, or you can allow that seed to continue to have a mental exercise that if you don't understand it, you are not going to move. But this noble man, I love the way Jesus Christ used men and women of stature or lowness. A noble man is a person that has good pedigree or good connection. In other words, they are the top of the line people that can have everything. And yet he said, this person, even though he has everything, there's a certain point they can't do anything unless he comes to the Lord. And there's sometimes that low people that would say, because they are so desperate, nothing. He, would, he was equal. Most of us perhaps can be halfway on that journey where we can be called halfway noble people. If we can do it, we will do it on our own. But there's a time that you and I may face ourselves and say, I cannot do that anymore. Jesus Christ says this, and that was a miracle. At the place. Now, before we conclude the message, I'd like for us to consider this. Today is a day of restoration. Today is a day where we will believe that God would meet us in our situation. We will just allow Him. Is that okay with you? The seed that has been planted, because it says here the noble man has nothing to do with Him. It has to do with someone that he loves. Perhaps you are okay with your life. Perhaps your families, perhaps your brothers or sisters, they are desperately asking for someone to help them. And you say, okay, sir, but now this is the moment. If you don't have any need for yourself, I'm going to ask you to do it for someone that you love. Can somebody say amen? Let us see. Because there's something beautiful that will happen when the, when the, when the hand of God, the touch or the master will touch either you or the one that you love. Let's bow our hands. Father, again, we thank you today. I'm going to call the, the pastors that, I, that will be praying. Come, please, the pastors. And just sound up the keyboards. Lord, again, we thank you this morning. We have come before you. Just like the noble man, we don't have any need, perhaps, but if you have a need, that's fine. And we are going to believe your word today. In Jesus' name. We have your pastors. If you need healing, if you need restoration, if you need touch from God, I'm going to ask you please to come. Anyone else, come, just come, and, and for women to women, they will pray for you, come. God bless you, come. Anybody else, come. Let this moment be a time where the Lord, God bless you, come. Come, come. Quickly, let this be a point of belief. You have believed, don't, don't let unbelief take away your opportunity to come. If you don't have to be the one, pray for someone just like this, this noble man. Come, come, quickly, quickly. Pray, stand. God bless you. God bless you. If you have someone with you, just tell them, come. I'll, I'll go with you. I'll go with you. Come on. Let this moment be a time of a great opportunity for God to touch. God bless you. Lord, again, we come before you. It's an application of our faith. We are men and women of faith. We, are, we believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's a moment that we can practice our faith. I pray, God, as you are speaking to the rest of us that might have an opportunity to be a channel of healing, a blessing, oh God, I pray, God, that we will pray for our parents, our children, that we will be connected right now Stand where you are, my brother, my sister. Stand where you are and connect with the power of God. We bless you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. 
Oh, healer. Jesus, Jesus. Spirit move. Spirit move.
You may be seated for a second. Thank you so much for, for the prayer. It is my prayer that the church will be, uh, has an atmosphere of anticipating miracles and, and healing. There are many people that need that. And, and for those of us, we just have to connect with them. I purposely um, omitted, when I was reading the word, I omitted a certain verse. And if you catch it, talk to me later on. It's very important because I jumped, if you notice this, at the last two verses. If you were following through, I omitted, I did not say it out because this is part of the closing message. And, and, and on the verse 53, it says, So the father knew it was at the same time in which Jesus said to him, Your son lives. And I stopped there. I did not read the next one. And I jumped to verse 54. Because there's a power in that word. The continuation of that, which is the end of the message, is this. And he himself, okay, believed, and what? And his whole household. Did you see that? If you caught, if you caught that, then God bless you. But I omitted that because from the very beginning, the person was desperate. And he had his healing, and he did not stop there. The difference between a person who will have a relationship with God is there. And he says, and he believed in his household. What does that mean? He's a nobleman. He has his family. He has his servants. He has his influence. He did not stop owning his miracle most of Christians are just like the people that when they receive their healing they stop they don't tell anyone there are people that are healed from cancer there are people healed from a certain death there are people that God take from the very core of hell and they get saved and they will just say oh it was just something they never tell anyone about the power of God. My brothers and sisters, we are all witnesses. In other words, you can only tell someone about Jesus what he had done in you. If we tell everyone about what God has done in our life, this church is just not going to be we might have every day, a moment, every hour, message. Why? Because if we tell other people that there is Jesus Christ, that they can heal and heal them, he, they will receive their healing. And out of the result of that, it's not because of what we have said, but because they will believe. If even the woman at the well, people said, we don't believe you just because you told us, but because we hear from Jesus Christ. My friend, he says, he did not stop. If God has given you a miracle, if God has healed you, if God has taken you, if God has given you a miracle, don't say it was just an accident. Tell them about who is the one. And they in turn will have an opportunity to know the one who gave you your healing. It's about time. It's about time that we don't stop telling Jesus, uh, people about Jesus. It's about time that we will rise up. It's about time that you will tell others, let me tell you what Jesus Christ did in my life. Let me tell you. And they will never be the same again because you, they will become just like that. And the nobleman says he believed and his household as well. Father, we thank you this morning. And I pray, God, that you will allow us to be messengers of your goodness. That, oh God, as you are answering our miracles, Lord, that we will not stop there. That we will tell other people about you, that you love us so much. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever will believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. As I close today, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, He's offering us eternal life. And let us pray this prayer. Father, 
I confess that I'm a sinner. Guilty of separation from you. For everyone has sinned and come short of the glory of God. Forgive me. I believe Jesus Christ is God. He became man. He died for my sins. He purchased my sins by his blood. And so I opened my heart and received Jesus Christ as my Savior. Help me to tell others about you. In your first name I pray. Everyone will say amen and amen and amen. God bless you. Give somebody a high five. Amen.